Tarzan, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Hello there. See you again. Cheers. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, how are you? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. from the new news? Yeah. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah. David, what you are, if you uh, don't mind, we'll just um, make a brief statement and then sure. take some okay. questions. Yeah. All right, well, look, um, welcome to the Jolji Dairy. I've just been inside uh, speaking uh, with Mrs. Patel, uh, a recent victim of an attack uh, with a hammer. And sadly, an exact example 
of why Acts would change the Sentencing Act to send a clear message to the judiciary that the public does not tolerate these kinds of attacks. Our amendment to Section 9 of the Sentencing Act would add an aggravating factor of a crime against a person who is working sole charge in a circumstance where their home is adjacent to the place of the attack. Let me go into a bit of background here. First of all, there are a lot of people our economy depends on, such as people and taxi drivers, such as Google. Just let that pass, so. So another person the economy depends on, but not always good for pre press conferences. Um, uh, our economy depends on people who work sole charge in dairies, convenience stores, retail, transport, taxis, Ubers, and they find themselves uniquely vulnerable, particularly but not always when working after hours. We believe the Sentencing Act is the way that the people of New Zealand through Parliament send their message to Parliament, to judges, about what is critically important uh, in the criminal justice system. I feel, having visited so many dairies and convenience stores over the last several years, that there are many, many people in our community who feel that they have been abandoned. They are some of the greatest New Zealanders who work for long hours, often for little overall pay, but nonetheless are essential to the functioning of our society. They wonder, who will be robbed or ram-raided next? Will it be my store? Will the same people that did it before come back again? Will they have weapons? Will they escalate if I fight back? And if I call the police, will anyone come in time? Does anyone care anymore? I feel that the way the Sentencing Act has been set, it has neglected a sector of our society for whatever reason, and they are not getting the justice and attention they deserve. Speaking to Mrs Patel, this is a woman who is completely beside herself, and who wouldn't be, having been attacked multiple times with a hammer. She said just now to me that she felt as though she had died. I said, you're still here. Thank you for being brave, and thank you for what you do. But we need more than kind words. We need justice. We need to make it clear that if you attack somebody working sole charge, if you attack someone who has their home adjacent, uh, then your sentence will be harsher than otherwise. We already say it's an aggravating factor to attack somebody in their home. It should be an aggravating attack factor to attack someone in their workplace adjacent to their home or to attack someone who is working sole charge. We're very happy to take questions, but not before I acknowledge Paramjit Palmer, a former member of parliament, a an Act Party candidate this election, and somebody that we're very proud uh, to have on our team, and someone that has a deep affinity and empathy uh, for the Mount Roskill community where she was previously based as an MP, uh, and for New Zealand's Kiwi Indian community, uh, those people who make up many of the employees that we're talking about today. Uh, very happy to take any questions. Yes, David, uh, my question to you is, uh, I'm sure your party should be aware of the fact that apart from the recession, and the crippled economy, law and order is one of the major issues. Many people from the Indian community are leaving the country. They are moving across the district to Australia. What's your party's take about it? Well, I was visiting a dairy in uh, Hamilton a couple of months ago. I, I met a guy who ran a dairy there. He said, actually, you know what, I'm thinking about going back to India. Yeah. Um, and he felt a real sense of betrayal because he'd chosen New Zealand, yeah. but in the meantime, New Zealand has changed and he feels like the deal has not been honoured. So I'm distinctly aware that people from the Kiwi Indian community are thinking about becoming Kiwi Aussies, and that's a real loss uh, for New Zealand and for them. The only winner there is Australia. Uh, we need to make sure that New Zealand remains a place which is seen as safe, and it's not just affecting people who are running dairies, convenience stores, people who are driving taxis, 
driving Ubers. Uh, it's affecting everybody right through the economy. It's affecting the English language schools. It's affecting tertiary education. Students, not only from India, but from around the world, uh, are choosing not to come to New Zealand because they see it as being less safe. I spoke to a principal who was trying to import or at least recruit teachers from offshore. Uh, teachers are thinking maybe we won't go to New Zealand because it's less safe. So yeah. this law and order issue is not just an issue for people in New Zealand, it's an issue for people who are thinking of not even coming to New Zealand. And for people who did choose New Zealand, they are now saying, well, actually, New Zealand hasn't kept the promise of New Zealand for all New Zealanders, and particularly people in the Kiwi Indian community, due to the nature of the work that many do, but also due to the fact that some people in the Kiwi Indian community think maybe this society doesn't care as much about us. Well, the ACT Party says that's wrong, and we will amend the Sentencing Act to make sure it's an aggravating factor to attack people who work sole charge, and especially people who work with their dwelling adjacent to their business. But we want to advise to the present government. My advice to the present government? Resign. Bring the election forward and go now. Well, no one thing will stop criminals committing these crimes. What it means is that if the people who attacked Mrs. Patel with the hammer uh, were sentenced, were convicted, they've got to be caught, uh, they've got to be convicted, and then they come forth for sentencing. And it's at that point that they would find the judge saying, well, you attacked uh, somebody who was working sole charge and had their dwelling adjacent. That's an aggravating factor under Section 9 of the Sentencing Act. You will now get a tougher sentence than you otherwise would have. Now, if you work that back, we know that much of the crime that's currently happening is not opportunistic, it's not a crime of passion, it's strategic and it's planned. We need to start sending the message to these people that this kind of attack is not acceptable to the New Zealand community. We're not going to abandon our dairy owners, our convenience store workers, our taxi drivers, our Uber drivers. We're going to make sure that the penalties are tougher for attacking them because they're more vulnerable. They're getting attacked because they're alone. They feel more vulnerable. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Great. Maybe, maybe um, but, well, can I just finish that? Um, we, we need to send, as a community, through this election, through Parliament, the message that this kind of crime is unacceptable and will be met with harsher penalties. And that's how the Sentencing Act works. Now, um, Prime Minister, Mr. Clinton has obviously ruled out um, implementing a wealth tax or anything like that. Do you have any kind of predictions on what they are going to announce? Well, Chris Hipkins needs to start working out what he stands for. He mostly just says that, he, that what they don't stand for. Um, but I believe you cannot trust Chris Hipkins on a capital gains tax. His Minister of Finance wants one. His Revenue Minister wants one. He's on the record saying he wants one. His two coalition partners want one. I think when Chris Hipkins says he won't tax your assets, he doth protest too much. The only way to be sure that you won't have your assets looted after you paid income tax saving them up is to vote for ACT and ensure we have of an act national government. Can Labour report to offer tax cuts if it doesn't also either increase taxes elsewhere or just cut spending? Well, the, the real issue is how do we cut waste? Just today we found out that the free school lunch program uh, was an enormous waste with sandwiches being fed to pigs. Uh, we have half a billion dollars of rapid antigen tests expired sitting in a warehouse and they don't know what to do. Whichever way you turn, you see a government that has increased expenditure and got worse results. Have a look at Oranga Tamariki. 800 extra staff and a 56% increase in spending by Oranga Tamariki in five years. But the kids they are responsible for are fewer, more abused and less accounted for. In every single area, Labour is wasting money. So can we afford to cut tax? Yes, we can, but it starts with cutting waste. Can Labor do that? No. Grant Robertson is the waster-in-chief. Thank you. All right, now, sir, you had a question. So uh, what I wanted to say is, look, in three months' time, we are going to respond by our action yeah. in the election. That yeah. will be our response to the current chaos. But what I'm saying is most of these people are coming after cigarettes and all that. Mm. Do the cigarette companies have to take some responsibility for this? Mm. Well, I think the reason people are stealing cigarettes is because 
as a retailer of cigarettes, you have to pay the tax. The tax is 90% of the value. So I think the government, as, the world, as New Zealand's biggest uh, tobacco addict, uh, does have to take some responsibility. It is their policy that has made dairy owners de facto uh, ta tobacco tax collectors and put them in the frame uh, for crime. Certainly, ACT believes those increases in tobacco tax uh, need to stop. Uh, and the constant war uh, on dairy owners uh, has really made, been a result of being collateral damage in the war on tobacco. So I don't blame the tobacco companies. Um, they're not the key reason that people are attacking dairies. Uh, it is the customers and the government and the tax going on between them that has put uh, dairies in the frame. Thank you. Right. Just lastly, yes. um, are there any other options that ACT is considering in terms of well, we've been the, the leading advocate of making fog cannons and bollards available with less bureaucracy. Uh, we want to increase prison capacity. We want separate youth imprisonment facilities. Uh, we want to make sure that 17-year-olds who commit much of this crime are put back into the adult justice system. We want to bring back three strikes, review the use of home detention where many criminals keep on offending. Uh, Overall, ACT has a suite of policies which are designed to put the rights back in the hands of people like Mrs Patel who are following the law trying to make an honest buck and put the consequences back on the feral people uh, who attacked her with a hammer and have left her fearing for her life but also fearing to live her life which should be her right here in New Zealand. Right. Thank you very much, Thank folks. We're, um, yes. Uh, Law and order, regarding law and order, police is doing its job and all these crimes are happening. What is the, when the police catches them, what, there are no consequences. There is no deterrent. It's still the crimes is increasing. Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking about uh, reducing this uh, crime or what would be the consequences? What do you yeah. feel advise yeah. regarding the consequences? Mm -hmm. Well, so that this yeah. crime well, sir, it's a, it's a very reasonable question. Uh, I think what we have at the moment is a situation where the police are playing tag and release. They're catching and then arresting the same person. The police don't come and the police know they can't do they anything. Do, That's yeah. the problem. They do their so job, what do you, what do, you do about that? Well, number one, you increase the prison capacity. Number two, you have a separate youth wing of correction so that the youth offenders get taken somewhere. They won't have their phone, they won't have any fun, and the only way to get out is rehabilitation. Uh, they can't climb on the roof, break someone's wrist and be bribed with KFC. They should be under corrections. Uh, the next issue is uh, we need to make sure that when people get out of prison, they're actually equipped to go straight. So X policy is if you want early parole, then you have to learn to read and get a driver's license because we keep letting people out of prison. They can't read, they've got no driver's license, they're back inside within four years, 70% of them are back inside within four years. Um, you know, that is not acceptable. So more people in prison, more rehabilitation in prison, and ultimately more rights for people who follow the law, more consequences for people who break the law. We wish you were the Prime Minister. Well, I wish I was, well, I wish I was the Prime Minister too, mate. You vote for ACT, what might just happen? And about the uh, National Party, Mm. Would they agree with uh, your policy? Well, we need to make the, the National Party braver, and the number one way to make the National Party brave is to give your party vote to act. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David, there's a people from uh, Cop Taxi. They would like to ask you a question. Yes. Thank you, David. Thanks, yes. thanks for your time. I yes. uh, just want to ask you one more thing. You know, our taxi drivers, mm. they are frontline workers. They are working on the road. Mm. They are getting scared. They mm. have been given a threat mm. that mm. if they are asking for a fare, which mm. is their right, mm. like they are going, they are picking up a client, dropping mm. them, it's a hundred dollar fare, but at the end what they do is mm. they don't pay them. Mm. And we give each and every description. Like I work in the call mm. center as an mm. assistant manager mm. and I, I can mm. tell you, 1,500 drivers on the road, mm. they are suffering every day. Mm. We tell the authorities mm. that this is the name of the person, mm. this is where we have dropped them, mm. this is the description of the person, mm. we wait there, mm. nothing happens. And mm. at the end, what we get is, it's a civil matter, we can't mm. do anything. Yeah. So how are our drivers going to survive mm. if we don't do, if the, no actions are taken? Mm.
I mean, they are there to feed their families. You know what? Yeah. What we can expect from the national? What? What are your things that the yeah. actions will be taken? Yeah. I can't speak for the next, national but from our from our point of view, uh, number one, uh, we are going to make it tougher on people who are convicted yeah. of a crime against someone working sole charge. So that's what we're announcing right. today. When it comes to people who are fear dashing or running off without paying it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we need to do is free up police time so the police can deal with lower level matters. At the moment, the police are so busy tagging and releasing and catching the same criminals over and over again that they don't have time for someone shoplifting. If it's less than $500, they don't want to know. Yeah. And as a result, the supermarkets uh, for example, are starting to take the law into their own hands. Yeah. You're a one person in a taxi at night with some guy you know, running off without paying you. You, you. you can't take the law into your own hands. It's not yeah. safe. Right. So we've got to get to the stage where if you've ID'd a person, the police have got time to chase them down. But that won't happen when the police are overrun uh, with too much crime. People have already arrested, but they got let straight back out. So yeah. the number one thing is more imprisonment capacity and our alternative budget it shows how we could get the prison population back to where it was before Labor came in. I'm not saying that that's our goal, but we'd create the capacity so the judges can send them there. Um, and once you've got the people locked up, I think you probably you'll find the police have more time to deal uh, with issues that they regard as minor. But if it's your family you're trying to feed with that $100, then that's major. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. No problem. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I uh, thank you very much for, for coming along. It's been a great uh, press conference, interactive and uh, multimodal and uh, we hope that um, you guys uh, have got, got useful stuff from us. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody. We really appreciate you coming along.